This area of specialization and research without literacy, education, and lifelong learning. He holds a PhD in education with a specific focus on adult literacy education. He has published articles in the area of adult literacy education, lifelong learning, higher education, community-based participatory action research, and community university engagement. As part of his community university engagement, Prop Upunjuru is active in supporting civil society organizations that promote adult education in Uganda. He is also the coordinator of the UNESCO Chair on Social Responsibility in Higher Education and Community University. He is the UNESCO Chair of Lifelong Learning Youth and works at Guru University. He was part of the East African team that worked on the transforming employability for change in East Africa, as well as the strategic partnership for higher education innovation and reform project, focusing on enhancing graduate employability for social change in East Africa. He has coordinated several projects in the area of adult literacy education, entrepreneurship literacy for non-literate out-of-school youth in Uganda. And he was also involved with youth entrepreneurship and employability training in many universities in Uganda and the UK. It gives me great pleasure to invite Prof. George Opanjuru to address us. Thank you very much, Ronin. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I think I have been able to introduce. I am going to look at uh, the status and significance of higher education community engagement in Africa. Uh, Community university engagement has been actually exhaustively defined with by different presenters and keynote speakers that have been presented over the last three days, but for some of us over the last four days, because so we started with the pre workshop. And of course, the emphasis is the collaborative partnership between higher education institutions and their surrounding communities where the institution works together with members to identify and address social, economic, and environmental challenges. Uh, community university engagement it takes various forms. I, would, I prefer to start with the research element to emphasize the fact that community university engagement has a research uh, approach, which is community action research program. In some places, they refer to it as community outreach program. The last presenter made a very articulate, the pre last, the one of the keynotes here, uh, presenter talks about the outreach approach and how it can be extended. Some universities prefer to refer to it as university community engagement. University community engagement. That has implications. Community, university engagement, university, community engagement. Uh, it, 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 it connotes where uh, that particular university provides its emphasis. If it emphasizes themselves, it's going out into the community. They are the important partner, then it is university community. If 
So empathy is on the community. Then you start with the community. Several speakers have talked about service learning, student service learning. Uh, this is very popular in uh, the Latin American universities. They most believe it. they come with the service learning. And service learning to some of us restricted to only an aspect of community university engagement, which emphasizes the teaching uh, of the students. Um, Community-based participatory action research, that one is similar with the one I've already mentioned about. From all this, you can see that uh, the naming struggles both community intervention, research projects, universities, which universities are set to do by virtue of their existence. Universities are set to do to teach, what we call teaching and learning. Then universities are also set to create knowledge. And if you bring the aspect of community, then we talk about knowledge co-creation, which is a research element. And then universities are set to engage. Originally, they were talking about to extend service to the community. There is therefore no doubt that uh, many universities are established as a response to community needs, which have to address or contribute to solving some well-defined community problems. That community think can only be sorted out through the establishment of a university. In the first place, universities, including the old ones in Britain, including this very old one, the Alexandria, come as locations where people can get together and think about their society. So I would like us to move away from thinking that the element of community university engagement is something that is still being introduced within the university. It is traditionally one of the core functions of the university. And it is what us as scholars of engagement are trying to articulate to enable universities that tend to adopt school approach to understand and, and, and upscale engagement. This shows that there is a natural existence, a natural aspect of the existence of uh, universities uh, in the Okay, that is what I've uh, already done. Yes. Okay. Now, um, already we are talking of the different nomenclature. It is important to note that uh, some people prefer that one I've already discussed about. Here in Rhodes, we talk of university community engagement. That is why there is a Rhodes University Community Engagement Directory or Department. There is also there are also other names such as higher education community engagement. And this is the one I'm going to try and use, which is the the HECD, or just community engagement C E, uh, community university partnership. This has been coming on. I've been picking them uh, after presentations we are going on. University public engagement, that's another engagement approach. Campus community partnership, campus community partnership is one of them. Community higher education partnership, community higher education tech is there. The older generation will talk about community education and extra middle studies. That is, existed at the time I started work. Community education and extramural studies. 
he has now been changed into the Department of Lifelong uh, Learning. Uh, Seems has been taken out. All just extramural studies. All Department of Extramural Studies stems. This existed uh, in the university, most universities that were founded uh, by the Bishop of Luke in Africa. It's not yet clear if these different nomenclature are an indication of different philosophical perspectives in university work with the community. But of course, this is not what we are focusing on uh, today. Um, the concept of higher education that emphasizes the importance of universities and colleges working with the community and their surrounding localities. The concept of community university is an approach, is an approach to higher education. If universities are created by the community, for the community, and with the community, it means that the entire framework of their operation should adopt working with the surrounding community to address local issues. So the partnership formed through community university engagement can provide opportunities for research, provide opportunities for doing research that addresses pressing issues. Not research that are collected from literature coming from elsewhere or replication studies that are going on in other continents. It also facilitates the co-creation of knowledge that benefit both the university and the community. So if the university and the community is to exist organically, it means what is taught in the university must be immediately relevant to the community. We always uh, get this challenge. That's why you show in my profile. If you and graduate your students from the university into the community where the university resides and they cannot fit. They either migrate or they stay unemployed. Unemployed. If there is a high level of unemployment among the graduates, which I think is a challenge, it means what is taught in the university has no relationship with what is going on in the community. So there must be intrinsic relationship. Immediately the graduate comes out, he should be able to see work or fit in work, but not fit into nothing. Maybe that is why we are having a lot of people migrating across the Mediterranean Sea. Europe, for those northern states, and from here to Australia, because those are where the university curriculum makes sense and they find jobs. They leave Africa, they go to Canada, and in Canada, jobs are looking for them. What does it tell us as an African university? It means the element of community university engagement is running in to a different direction, that's that. There's absolutely nothing to inform the curriculum about. So community university, okay, promotes the exchange, promotes uh, knowledge exchange between the university and the community. Therefore, yeah, I've already talked that. Additionally, it will also enhance the relevancy as I expect, as explained. Our graduates must be able develop our society, not to run away from our society, not even to leave our community. If they are coming from rural areas, they should know how to improve uh, those locations. So I would like now to go back a bit, as I've explained, that universities in Africa started with departments of community education. 
or community engagement with different names. Whatever the difference in the name, university, community university interaction is not something new. Some young people or scholars that have just come into this field think that it's a new fact. It did not start with the white paper in is it 1994 in South Africa? Yeah. For example, at Macquarie University, it started in 1953. 1953. And Macquarie University started in 1922. Of course, I know Rhodes started in 1904, but as a colleague in 18 something. This was a model along the British university traditions over its colonies. It means even the traditional British universities had these engagements. And this is one of the scholars, the, the earlier scholars. He says, today, schools and department of extramural work exist in all African universities, in all African universities, in what used to be called the British colonies. All, because I'm talking about the status of community university engagement. So by 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 that time, 1973, which is earlier from the 1950s, these existed. So this shows that uh, the idea of universities working with communities is almost as old as universities in all African universities. The British particularly after the war years of the 1940s, the world wars, were concerned about the progress of their colonies. They wanted to see some speed in the development of their colonies. They were also interested with the veterans that were coming home. What do we do with the veterans? They have gone abroad, they have interacted with other people, and they have come back with nationalist ideas. How do we use them to promote development? How do we organize them to change their African community? This is encouraged them to create, in 1923, the advisory committee on education, for the advancement of education in the colonies. Now, the creation of these committees led to the establishment of the Department of Community Education, mass education, adult education in many British colonies to work on the agenda of advancing the development of their community as they perceived it at that time. As I say, they wanted the progress of their colonies. In 1944, it was reported that the advisory committee of education in the colonies stressed the relationship of education to the community of development, community, community of development and coordination of the efforts of the various agencies concerned with the improvement of life in the African communities. This is an element which I have not been hearing coming out, that we are working on a long time health tradition for the improvement of African communities. But then I can, what then happened? Why are our graduates not fitting into our community? It is because as the colonialists left, we wanted to replace them. And to replace them, we wanted their education. And indeed, we replaced them in the 1960s. And after that replacement, we over replaced them. And there was now no position left for replacing because the economy was not growing as the university was uh, intrinsically meant to do. So the primary focus 
of this early university community engagement, yeah, was on those mass education that can, I've already stated. These were what the early department of external studies were doing <laughs> from that time. And it was at least very prominent in Uganda. In Uganda, there was one university. In, in East Africa, there was one university, the University of East Africa, which is the current Makerere University, the current University of Nairobi, the current Daraslam University. All these ex had extramural uh, uh, departments. And that is why Nyerere is famous for saying, and uh, he quoted it, that university is still continuing stressing the early nationalists. Universities must work for the betterment of their community. So where have we lost it? Universities must continue. So it should be added that during the years after the war, the British immediately wanted to serve the service men. I've already mentioned that. Uh, now, the Department of Extramural Studies has to date undergone some transformation because of the pressure that the regular academics were putting on them. They have become, they, 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 are, they are changing to departments of distance education. That's why you heard I was the dean of the School of Distance and Lifelong Learning. Going back to ordinary teaching and getting out of community university engagement, which was the focus. That even contribute, contributed to nationalist movement at that time. Universities contributed to nationalist movement at that time, especially this Department of Extramural Studies. But when the colonial government were put off, independence were achieved in many countries, the dictatorial governments did not want these departments because they were responsible for students and rest. They were responsible for lecturers, critiques, and they were responsible for creation of the nationalists. Fort Hare is known for that. The Mugabe studied there. Kerry University, the Kenyatta studied there. Up to today, the, 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 the Steve Biko studied in these universities. They were all, they started as a student movement. And the problem at that time was freedom. Okay. Was freedom from colonialism. And because of that, uh, I'm being told I'm left with 10 minutes. The student movement, the departments had to be closed. And now we are focusing on issues of development. There's brain recognition. That's why this conference, I love it so much. Many universities are espousing a new concept of community university engagement and making university relevant to its community. A re of work, a discovery of research methodologies and publication. In other words, creating the scholarship of engagement, which is a good development now. Uh, then from an African perspective, sustainable development, good quality of life, issues of social justice, which is very eminent in South Africa here. Uh, engaging with these communities can also provide opportunities for research to address uh, many other issues. I have tried to articulate why it is important, which I think is a repetition of what I've already said. Opportunities for research can lead to co-creation of knowledge, improvement of university curriculum, ensuring employability for the students, and also publication. Then uh, promotion of social justice, and advancing sustainable development and charting a new line contributing to SDG. We have success here. I believe all universities that are members of the South African Higher Education 
community engagement forum are uh, subscribing to this. And then we have African universities with strong departments of community university engagement as members of the Talawa Network, International Network. So um, I've listed them there, but uh, not all of them. What we need to do, this is uh, the, the last slide, we still have a lot of challenges of institutionalization, which we have been talking about, standardization, ethical protocol, funding, policies, uh, networking, and continuous articulation of the, the agenda of community university engagement, opening up university for the free entry and exits of community members, porously existing without us going to them, but then us going to them and then coming to us naturally, not only to our libraries, but also to the students as well. Uh, those are the works I did. Now for what to this, this is what I've been talking about. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, those are the members of Taiwan Networks. I, I encourage those of you who have not yet joined as vice chair now to enjoy to, to join the Taiwan Network of Engaged Universities. You can see some uh, South African universities are there. All members of the should be joined the universities there and uh, many others. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Punjuru. Um, we are five minutes left, so comment, question, thoughts? Okay, we'll start with Sam. Can we have a mic? I think I want to talk to the I think we are we are facing a a dilemma a dilemma uh, where universities are, are trying uh, to be engaged as they could be the research and other service learning initiatives that we are But uh, currently, the observation is that uh, because of the Legacy that was created in the previous uh, dispensation, uh, colonialism, and so forth. Majority of the students that are in this institution, their primary focus is to get certified so that they can get employed. Mm -hmm. And uh, the component of uh, 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 engaged scholarship and community education, it is in the type of dimension of okay. Now, the, the question is how, how then do we bridge the divide between the legacy that was created and making institutions of higher learning relevant to the core so that they respond directly to the needs of the society? Thanks. Can I just pass my Yeah. Thanks. Uh, well, thanks for your talk. I have said that uh, many because of time we might have missed out on I mean, a very key aspect from the African perspective, which is the World Bank and IMF policies of the 80s mm -hmm. that push uh, the society uh, the thinking and talking away from universities because universities are considered in action, not the critical aspect of African development. Mm -hmm. And skip away uh, what the she was saying in the 70s. Developing the extra courses and our focus on the basic and common education. That in itself has been a significant deterrent of the role of the African University of Development. So, one point I was asked to that is that they have become a different kind of engagement to the university and society where most vice chancellors are appointed by the president and the ruling party that become more accountable to the Political dispensation of not the economy to share the development of the common person. Mm -hmm. So there's that tension between what the part the state is, is wanting to do and what academics. Mm -hmm. And again, that's where we talk about the lack of academic autonomy and the lack of critical scholarship in multiple universities. Thank you, sir. Oh. 
Um, unfortunately, we can't take any more questions. Yeah, uh, the students, I think the students respond to the curriculum, given their desire to, to get certifications. Uh, it's, it's the last end desire is because those certificates guarantee them jobs. Mm. But in the, in the event that now the jobs are literally, we now need to create curriculums that make them innovators, mm. uh, job creators. To, to, to create the industries and the work and not to look for the work. Then that tweaks the, the need of the, the emphasis on certificates uh, is actually detrimental to the extent that uh, uh, it, 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 it makes them lose interest in the content that is being delivered to them. And yet this content is what they should focus on to make them who they are. But of course, there are some content that naturally align with the work that the student is supposed to do, like the medical content, the engineering content, and the, you know, many other science-based programs or the professionally aligned program they're teaching. But even the teachers are getting stranded. They now need to go beyond school management and to school creations. So that, that is, is what needs to be done. And it can only be achieved through community university engagement, realigning the universities to the needs of the community and the kind of citizens that we need to put out there. Yeah, your universities accountability measures. The, 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 it's now it's like a top down. Whom do you respond to? As as uh, uh, they are presenting the Carnegie criteria, I thought if that is put into the accreditation systems then government can then be able to hold as chancellors accountable. And then for private and public universities that need to obtain charter, that becomes part of the, the accrediting requirement for obtaining a charter, not just the number of staff, the, the number of programs you have, and the, the, the student and the departments, which are kind of excluding the engagement bit. Yes, there is quite a lot that I would have we are still being driven into, in a different direction, the rankings, but that has been articulated by the, the former DBC, is still forcing us to fall out of line. And, and that is a movement that we need to recreate and articulate at international level so that we can influence the ranking criteria as well. I, I hope the Carnegie also can push theirs there so that universities that engage well like Rhodes can then move higher on the ranking mm -hmm. than the citation counts, the, the, the age impact, and all those kind of things. I, I don't know what the are Thank, Thank you. Very you. Much, Professor